To find the custom GPT, you go to GPTs over here in the left menu, click that. The first page that you will go on, that is the pre-built GPTs. These are GPTs from third parties or OpenAI. Be careful if you share sensitive or private information when using these third party GPTs and some of them may even require a license. Let's build our own GPTs. I go up in the upper right corner and hit create. Here I can choose between create and configure. Let's start with creating one. Here we can create one just by our natural English words. To the right, you will see a preview of our custom GPT. So far, we have nothing in it. That makes sense. Go down here to the prompt box, and then you can say, create a GPT that acts as a communication specialist that takes an email draft and writes a new email with a personal greeting. A friendly and concise message based on the draft and ends with a professional greeting and finally suggest an email subject. This is sufficient. I hit enter. Then ChatGPT will update our custom GPT. It will also follow up in a few seconds, probably asking for a name. Email policy. Is that good? I will say yes. That's a great name. So I simply just follow up with my natural English words. Now it even generates a picture that this little logo that you see over here to the right. I can choose to brainstorm that logo or say, this is fine. Here you say, do you like this one? I'll just say, okay. And then it will ask me a lot of other questions. We can choose to stick with the custom GPT here, or we can enhance it further. What ChatGPT has done is that if we go to configure, you can see it filled out all these fields automatically it even updates the icon up here. We could have made this ourselves and we will do so in a few seconds. Over here, we can try our new custom GPT. This is like trying it before we publish it. And for example, here I can say, hi, Ben, I find your negotiation and act towards me root kind regards. So a little bit of an unprofessional email. You can also see here that we have a spelling mistake. We will just let it be. Then our email polisher will create a nice email for us. We have the subject concern regarding recent communication. Hi, Ben, I wanted to share some honest feedback regarding our recent interactions. I found the tone of your negotiation and your approach towards me quite disrespectful, which I find disappointing. I hope we can move forward. So a professional email, just as we expected. If I'm happy with it, I hit create up here. Here there are a few settings. We will talk about that a little later in this topic. For now, just hit update. Our custom GPT is getting created. Currently, it's only me that have access to it. And if I hit view GPT, we can start operating here. You will also see that it shows up over to the left. What I can do from here is to click these three dots and choose hide from sidebar. If it for some reason doesn't show up there, and shows up here, you can always go up in this and choose show in sidebar. Right now it's hide from sidebar. Also, if you're not seeing it at all, let's say you just have this new chat and you don't see it in the menu, you can always find your GPTs by clicking GPT. And then you will see the my GPTs. If I click it up here, then my new email policy will show up. From here, I can choose to edit it 
or delete it. And if I click it, I'm back into it. And then I can choose to keep it in sidebar. For now, this is good. Let's go to new chat and let's configure our own custom GPT. To do so, I again go to GPTs. I hit create. Let's first give it a little logo. We do that by making sure we are in configure, clicking this little plus. Here I can choose between uploading a photo or using DALI, that is the image generator. Since I already have a photo, I just click here and then I find my logo. I go to the lesson files, which we downloaded earlier. And here I move into the custom GPTs and projects. Go into the common sense bank and here we have a little logo. Now we will make a custom GPT that helps answering HR related questions. Then we can send it out in the organization. Over to the right, you will see that we now have the logo. We have not filled anything in in the custom GPT. Let's give it a name. I will call this one the common sense bank HR and call it here. And then you will see it updates to the right. We will also give it a description. I can say this is an agent that helps employees quickly find answers to common HR related questions. This description will show up underneath the title. This is just for easier identifying what this custom GPT actually does. Now we will give it instructions. This is like telling how should this custom GPT behave. And here I can say you are an HR assistant who helps employees by answering questions about policies benefits and procedures always answer clearly politely and based on the provided knowledge like this conversation starters these are conversation starters that will show up underneath here to get the conversation going. So it's easy for the user to interact with this custom GPT. For example, one of them could be how much vacation do I earn per year? And when can I take it like this? Then we will create a new one. Let's create three. So what I do here is to say, what is the parental leave policy and can it be taken in parts like this and let's finish the first one am i allowed to work remotely and what are the call hours you will see it shows up over here now it's easy for a user to start this conversation here I can choose to upload my files. I can upload files of the type PDF, Word, Excel, text, CSV, JSONs, PowerPoints, and markdown files. So I click upload files. This will let our custom GPT based it answers on these document. I just take the five PDFs from the lesson files and click open. Keep in mind that while we upload these, these are copied documents. So the knowledge is not linked, meaning that if I update my files, this custom GPT will not update. Further below, recommended model. Here I can choose to let the user decide what model he or she will use, or I can enforce it by saying it must use the 4.1 or 03. Let's leave that to the user. We can let our custom GPT have a few capabilities. Web search. Do I want uh, do I, I want to allow this custom GPT to access the web? Probably not. We not, don't need it here. Canvas. That is like this code block. Don't need that either. 
I don't need it to generate images this time, and I'm not using the code interpreter or data analysis. That is, do I want the custom DBT to be able to write Python to interpret data? We don't need it. Finally, here in the create new action, this allows us to retrieve real time data from the outside through APIs. It takes a little bit more to configure. We will leave it blank. So here we have configured ourselves. This gives us much more flexibility and accuracy. Now I decide what's getting in this configure as opposed to before where we created it. Over here, we can try it again and you can also see that the user can change the model. If I want, I hit create. And let's talk a little bit about these sharing settings. Up here, I can choose to invite people from my workspace. That is the ChatGPT Teams workspace or Pro. So if I write Stine here, you will see that Stine Rasmussen shows up. Now I can allow her to chat, view settings, that is all these settings over here, or edit. Let's just remove her again. Down here, I can also say what kind of access do I want to this custom GPT. Invite only, that is, I need to invite every user. Anyone at the Anna Jensen org with the link, that is my workspace. This is just the entire workspace without a link. I can make it public. You should not do that probably, anyone with the link. Or make it available in the GPT store. So every user of the chat GPT can find it. Usually you just want to go with an invite only or choose someone from your workspace. Then we can click update. Now we are ready to try it again. This is like we did before. Let's just update, update here. And again, I can choose to view GPT. Now it goes up here and actually you can see it does not show up here in the sidebar. Sometimes you will not see him there. And as we learned, we could choose to click this drop down and keep in sidebar, then you will see it shows up. Yeah. When I'm trying to operate this model, that is, I come into ChatGPT like this, opening up ChatGPT. Now I can find it in the sidebar. I can click here. And up here, you will see that the user can choose a model, for example, 40GPT03, whatever model OpenAI currently have. Let's just stick with the four. Oh, now I can go down here and I can choose to pick one of the conversation starters. Then this prompt will be sent and you will see that we get an answer based on the knowledge that we provided. Here it's from the FAQ. If I want to give this custom GPT another prompt, I again go up here to the drop down and I say new chat. I can also prompt it myself. I can say, can I transfer unused vacation days to next year? So like chatting with GPT, but the custom GPT is a specialized version, a light AI agent. Here you can see that we get an answer. I can transfer unused vacation days to the next year, but with some condition up to five days. And there's also an email here. I can say, give me the source for that. I want to know where it found it. Then it says from the vacation and time of policy, it quotes it and from the FAQ. Really nice. Let me go up in this drop down again. If I want to edit it, I can go to places. I could go to the GPTs and find my GPTs, or I can simply just go here and say edit GPT. I can also choose to hide it from the sidebar. Then in review GPT, the users of this GPT can review it. Right now it's only me, but imagine that I shared this. Your next ChatGPT video around using ChatGPT for advanced Excel is right here.